what's going on everyone thanks for tuning in uh figure just do like a little bit of a different video today kind of just like a a vlog maybe go through a little of a bench workout though i don't have anything specifically planned for today but we can just kind of go over some of the ideas of like warming up some of the technical points of the bench press maybe talk about some of the things that are currently going on right now um, so first thing obviously with bench press or any lift is is how to warm up so some of the stuff I like to do is not only warming up your joints and upper body that you're actually using for the lifts uh, for the bench press, but also the lower body too. Sometimes people will on lower body days only warm up the lower body and upper body days only warm up the upper body. And I like to do the full body. One, because the lifts are gonna be using the full body whether, whether you like it or not. Low bar squat's gonna use the upper body as far as getting the bar position and having the mobility to get the bar into a low bar position without any pain or anything like that. So it's important to warm up your upper body. And for someone like bench press, if you wanna work on that arch, sometimes tightness in the hip flexor can uh, limit that arch. And also sometimes tightness just in the, the quads or the calves or anything like that can limit exactly where you put your feet or maybe you'll, you'll be more relaxed because you don't wanna stay as tight as you want as you normally are and wedge everything in because you are maybe sore on the quads or maybe your, your calves and your Achilles are a little bit tight and so you kind of relax a little bit and you'll see some people maybe on their bench day after a high volume squat day if they're doing it 24 hours or 48 hours afterwards then they're going to be a little bit too loose and maybe not have their heels completely down until maybe they go press to kind of push it down real quick just to kind of get the weight up and then relax again so it is important to walk the entire entire body some of the stuff can just be movement. So you can literally just like warm up your wrists by doing wrist circles, both directions. You can warm up your elbows, doing elbow circles, both directions. Um, going into the shoulder, you can do it with just the weight of your arm or holding a light weight or a band. You can do different kinds of rotational movements and making sure you're going as far as you can in the range of motion and maybe pushing a little bit against it, going a little bit further beyond to kind of go full range of motion and stretch. Same thing the other way, and then seeing if you can go further. And the same thing can be done in the other directions, and you can even turn uh, palms down, palms sideways, palms up. You'll see a lot of people do that kind of stuff for bench press normally, warming up shoulders, or maybe rehab stuff if they have a band for some tension to kind of work that shoulder uh, rotator cuff muscles and everything. So you can use a light weight, like a just hold on to a five pound plate or two and a half pound plate, or use a band and do that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes I'll do like shoulder swings, uh, uh, circles, all that kind of stuff like that, just to kind of move the joint through its full range of motion in the socket. You could even do where you're internally and externally rotating with your arms out to the side. And again, trying to go all the way through the range of motion to kind of get the stretch in there too. And any kind of dynamic stuff you do is also just gonna kind of, you know, get your blood flowing, get your heart rate up, get you sweating a little bit, rather than just like holding a stretch or just like sitting on a foam roller. So same thing for lower body. You can do leg swings front to back. You can do leg swings side to side. You can do um, circles with your, your inside your hip. I think they're called fire hydrants. Um, you can do them on the ground or standing up. You can hold on to something because we're not so focused on balance. We're just focusing on, on warming up, loosening up that uh, muscle, especially the hip flexors. If you want to work specifically specifically on your arch, then you might work on your arch. If you want to use a foam roller and help to kind of loosen up that mid back and the upper back, you have at least the foam roller to kind of pin the different muscles and stuff in place. And then again, you can then do those movements again of doing whatever circles, whatever rotation you want to kind of loosen up that area before you go and you bench. And then of course, you do want to warm up with the bench itself. So if you're working up to 200 kilos, you don't want to just load up 200 kilos, you want to work up. I typically uh, recommend to everyone to start with the bar unless you have a high enough max. So if maybe you have a 500 pound uh, bench max, 227.5, maybe you won't start with empty bar. But if you're in those lighter ranges, if you're in the 200 pounds, 300 pounds, even 400 pounds, then most likely you want to warm up with the empty bar anyways, just because uh, the percentages and just because you can then kind of get those stretches with that weight pushing down a little bit. So you can kind of hold in the bottom, you can kind of twist 
to side to side. Um, you can do different grips. You can do a few reps wide, a few reps uh, normal, a few reps close to kind of just warm up those muscles through uh, a longer range of motion that you might use for your competition grip, uh, get more of a stretch in the bottom, and also different positions of elbow being in, elbow being out, that kind of stuff. It's important to have at least a couple warm-ups where you're doing higher reps with the lighter weights to again, get the heart rate going, get some dynamic movement going, uh, get some uh, blood flow and fluid into the joints and everything. And then you also want a couple of warm-ups where you're then really focusing on your technique. So you're going through your full setup, you're wearing your equipment, uh, you're working, if you're doing competition bench, you're working on that competition pause and you're getting used to those heavier weights before you go to whatever your working sets are. So if you're going up to, let's say 400 pounds, then you may do a 385 pound last warm up as a single rather than just going from whatever 250 or 300 and jumping straight up to 400 um, because you just haven't, um, kind of got the motor pattern down, you haven't gotten used to the weight, um, and then having that huge jump may kind of mess you up mentally, you may not be used to it, and then be like, oh crap, this weight is too heavy, and then you'll mess up your technique, you might descend too fast, not be tight, that kind of stuff. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we got uh, 70 kilos here for a A lot of times for my beginning warm-ups, I don't go through the full setup, so I might just do like a feet up bench to kind of focus more on upper body, and maybe do a slightly narrower grip so that I can work through a longer range of motion. This way, get a little bit more of a stretch in the bottom and I focus on warming up just the upper body. And then obviously once it gets heavier, and I'm getting closer to my working sets, then I'll go through a full setup. So like I said, I'm focusing on the movement pattern and going through my whole system of how I set my shoulders, how I set my grip, how I set my feet, breaking the bar out, focusing on that competition pause, getting the bar path and everything like that. So once you get to the heavier weights, it's important to do that. Loading up the 80 kilos now, 10 kilo jump. It all depends on what working set you're going to and how many warm-ups you like to do to figure out what jumps you like to take. But kind of in general, you want the jumps to be the same amount of weight or less as you're getting to your working set. And typically your reps will be the same amount of reps or less as you're going up in the weight. So that way you're comfortable with those jumps. So we'll take a 10 kilo jump here to 80 kilos and then we'll start making smaller and smaller jumps. All right, so just for the sake of the video, I'll go through my full setup here. I like to use the, the maximum grip width, um, especially since uh, I was focusing more on equipped lifting. And for the shirt, you want to use the max grip. So I've been doing my raw for some time with the max grip as well, just to get comfortable with it. So usually I like to go and put my pointer finger covering the rings, like this with my feet up and then I'll bring my feet back as far as I can while on the toes. So then I can use that to set my shoulders. Then I might wiggle a little bit to make sure I'm getting under the bar where I want to be. And then I slowly start wiggling my feet in place until I have everything done. Make sure I'm squeezing the bar as hard as I can. Everything is in place. Then I bring the bar out. Then that's when you get tight and control it down. Press it up. I like to uh, reset the uh, reps at the top as well, especially once you're getting close to the working set. And obviously, your working sets is you want to make sure you're taking time at the top when you reset to make sure everything's in place. Making sure your feet are in place making sure your arch is in place, you can take a new breath, make sure you're squeezing the bar as hard as you can, and then doing your next rep. If you start blending your reps, and then if you fall out of position, then every rep after that could also be out of position or go further and further out of position and just get worse and worse, and then you're not ingraining that good motor pattern. And there's a high self-belief usually when you're feeling like this. The emotions that you could feel, you could be really excited, determined. In between, I'm watching really this uh, doing, webinar you're here. Really sort of, um, and kind of embracing the challenge that you're feeling. And what would my play look like? 
told me, like, if I was playing outfield, like, I would, I would get the ball and I, I would look to be playing the ball forward as quickly as possible to teammates up the field. I would be, you know, taking players on one on one. I'd be dribbling. You'd, you'd, you'd watch the game and think, like, that person's been brave. So there's right a free now. webinar on Eventbrite um, uh, titled they it, like, they're getting back quickly. They're working Athletes really hard Finding the, the Zone um, Strategies for Performing game. Under pr Pressure. So I saw it for free. Figure B. Interesting to see what uh, some ideas are in other sports that may be applicable to powerlifting. When we're talking about being focused and being on task, you want to link your focus to your senses. What can you touch? What can you see? You know, what can you say in that moment? And like your own breath. Like, how do you feel? How can you connect with your breath? So a lot of good info out there from other sports. Uh, especially sports that have been around longer, more de uh, developed than powerlifting, maybe have more money than powerlifting. Um, but there's concepts in there that you can then apply to our sport, as you've seen in this presentation I'm watching. Especially one thing would be breath is important for powerlifting. And that can be throughout the entire competition. So when you first show up and you're doing weigh-ins and registration, you might be more relaxed, you're breathing normally. Versus when you're going out on the platform, your heart rate's up a little bit higher, you might be breathing a little bit harder. And then when you're doing the actual lift, then you're gonna be holding your breath, doing the Valsalvo maneuver. So then you're not gonna be breathing at all, you're just bracing and tensing everything up, uh, blood pressure spiking up. And then after you do your attempt and you come off the platform, then you need to try and relax and come back down. So you might communicate with your coach what the next attempt is and then go sit down in the staging area. And then it's about breathing slowly. Breathing in through the nose, long. Breathing out through the mouth, nice and long. Slowing your breath down, bringing your heart rate down. Because in however long the flight is, five to 12 minutes, you're gonna have to go out again and do the same thing again of building up that intensity, building up that uh, breath, doing another attempt while holding your breath, a heavier weight, hopefully. Um, and then again, for nine attempts. So it's very important to being able to controlling those different senses. Another thing would be your touch. So how you're gripping the bar, especially on deadlift, making sure you have it in the part of your hand that you want to hold on to so you're not losing your grip. For squat, it might even be important to kind of try and feel your feet inside your shoe, getting that rooting down, making sure you're, you're spreading your toes, you're pushing through the big toe, the little toe, through the heel, maintaining that balance and that support so you can do your squat. So important things to think about even uh, visual what you're looking at during each lift so if you're moving at, if you're looking at something that's moving like if you're watching someone walk by in front of you while you're doing a squat it may throw you off but if you're focusing on a point that's not moving and typically the same point every time whether it's in the gym or in a competition then you can use that point as a reference for how your body is moving through space and that's kind of how when you get the feel for a lift you feel like when you're hitting depth, um, because you're first seeing what it, what it's like to go down and do a squat, and then it becomes a motor pattern to then where you feel what your body feels like, the different joints and different muscles when you hit your depth. So when you go to a different place and maybe the wall is at a different distance, it might throw you off, or if you change your body weight a lot and then the joints stack differently, then it might feel really different. Um, but these are things that you should be trying to focus on and practice in training and also implement it in competitions to kind of improve your your skill, improve your game more than just let me pick this thing up and put it back down however I can. All right, we got 85 kilos loaded on to just a, a five kilo jump. Um, don't want to go too crazy today. Uh, so we'll see if we can do this for a triple with that reset at the top every time and the pause on the chest every time. So again, I like to lay down. Get my fingers, my pointer fingers over the rings. Bring my feet back as far as possible. Set my shoulders. Make sure I'm under the bar properly. Slowly wiggle my feet out until they're flat. Making sure I'm death gripping the bar and then bring it out. Another important thing to kind of point out that I see some people do is, uh, as you saw there, I held my breath, held everything tight until I completely finished the rep and then let my air out, took a new breath and done the next rep. Sometimes 
people let their breath out during the lift, either in the bottom, maybe halfway or towards the top. Depending on how good you are at it and how well you can maintain tightness, then it might be causing problems. It might make you lose your arch or maybe lose your tightness, lose your position. And depending on how difficult the rep is, so if you're pressing up and halfway through, you let your air out, you lose your arch, and maybe your feet slide, then you can then miss the lift. If it's easy enough or if you're strong enough at the top where you can let your air out, lose the tightness to finish it, then it won't happen. But it all just depends on the person, when they let the air out, how much tightness they lose, how strong they are in that range of motion. But I tend to tell everyone, hold your breath as long as possible until you finish the rep. If for some reason you feel like you have to let your air out, do it at that, towards that very top because especially on squat and bench, most people, once they get to that very, very top end range of motion, they have to lift and they don't have to worry about as much. Deadlift, a little bit different. Just depends on your style. So, hope you're all out there doing well, staying safe. Uh, hopefully you like this little bit of a different video. Uh, I get to get some of my training in and then show you a little bit of finer points of how to warm up, not only before you get under the bar, but also doing your warm up sets, getting into your working sets, and a little bit of how I set up for bench press to maximize my arch and tightness. I just wanted to say uh, we're basically unprecedented times right now. A lot of meets are getting rescheduled. Lots of meets are getting canceled. Some are up in the air and it's just kind of uh, managing your stress is the way you're going to get through this. It's kind of like in general for life and in powerlifting, it's all about managing stress. And so that just becomes a bigger factor right now. So you just have to decide if you don't want to compete until everything goes back to normal, then don't worry about it. You might not compete this year and you can just focus on the things that you need to work on, whether it's maybe moving up or down a weight class, whether it's working on technique, recovering from an injury, or just getting stronger and then coming back next year. Or if you do want to compete this year, you still have goals in mind um, that you want to hit and you have to go to certain competitions to do it, then you just have to deal with what's going on. You might sign up for a meet that gets canceled or gets pushed next year. You might sign up for a meet that is uh, mandatory to have a mask on, like all the USA powerlifting meets right now for however long, we don't know. And so you might have to just train like that and get used to it and get prepared for the competition. So you wanna focus on the things that you can control. So you can control which meets you wanna do or which meets you don't wanna do. You can control whether you wanna train with the mask to kind of prepare you for the competition or whether you don't wanna pr practice with it and then just put it on the competition for whatever three, four, five hours you have to put it on and just knock it out whatever weights you can do. The other thing is everyone's in the same boat as you. So if you're competing at nationals and you have to wear a mask, everyone else in your, in your weight class is gonna be wearing a mask too. They're gonna be dealing with the same thing. Everyone's gonna be on a level playing field. So like I said, just focus on the things that you can control, focus on your training, focus on what meets you wanna do, what meets you don't wanna do. And then we kinda of just have to wait and see what happens as things progress. Even the, the experts in the world outside of powerlifting don't know a lot of the things that are gonna happen in the coming months. Some of them are saying uh, different things and they're changing as they're getting more information, more research, more data. Um, so some things that may have been true three, four, five months ago are no longer true. So when you see adjustments being made in your country, in your state, uh, in, in the sport, then you can't get angry about it. You just have to go along with it since you aren't the one making the decisions. As far as what protocols are in place, like I see a lot of people complaining about the masks. We made our, our part by filling out the form or hopefully fill out the form saying what you would like to see at competitions. And then they, the EC made their decision and now you kind of have to just go with their decision and decide whether you still want to compete, whether you still want to volunteer, whether you still want to run a competition, or if you just want to not do any of that, wait for it to kind of go back to normal before you come back. So just a little way to uh, think about it, depending on where you are, it might not be that big of a deal for me. I'm down in Miami, Florida, so Florida is currently spiking. And then my county, Miami-Dade County, has the most cases out of all the counties in Florida. So I am in a little bit of a hot spot. So I just stay here in my room as much as I can, try and do my online coaching, try and do these videos for you all, get some more information out to you all, get some more value out to you. Maybe you can take something away uh, and improve your training. And then uh, 
We'll see when the competitions come back. There may be one in July 5th that's gonna happen. And if it's gonna happen, I may be able to go to it. Right now my plan is to go to it. And then we have all the other competitions coming up. It's gonna be pretty hectic end of the year. But we'll see what happens as far as South Regionals is still happening, even though Midwest and Northeast are now canceled. We'll see what happens with West with the Europa and Phoenix um, being canceled. But we have our South Regionals August 1st and 2nd. Then the week after that, there is a meet down in Miami. The week after that is Open Nationals, which I'm the technical secretary for. So I have to get all the referees and build out the schedule and everything like that. Then from then on, we have Raw Nationals. We have the North American Championships in Cayman. We'll see as long as they let the U.S. and other countries in. Then I'll be going there, um, having help out with the competition there. So lots of stuff going on that, again, I'm choosing which competitions I want to go to and following the protocols and choosing whether I want to compete or not at bench nationals or we'll see if there's another competition I can do or just choose not to. And that's, that's the same approach that you have to take. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this all the way through, took something away from it. Uh, thank you again for watching this video and all the other videos. And like I always say, if you want me to answer any questions you have about powerlifting, coaching, USA powerlifting, whatever, or any topics you want me to discuss, then you can comment below or contact me through the information I have in the description below, and I will answer it for you. All right, see ya.